Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Thursday, the ninth day of June, year of our Lord, 2022. I do pray this finds you well this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Then we read tonight from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 25. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, the king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. And the chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. And Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then, arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, He brought this man as one who was misleading the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and released to us Barabbas, the man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked. But he delivered Jesus over to their will. And that is the gospel of the Lord. So that, that's always a fascinating account when Jesus is before Pilate. John records some very interesting details. We were, of course, read from Luke this evening, um, the dialogue. I remember John was an eyewitness to many of these things. Uh, Luke is hearing this you know, from Mark, uh, from Peter, uh, from uh, Paul, uh, Peter being an eyewitness. Uh, um, anyway... So Luke doesn't have quite the details, but it interesting, it's interesting what he records. Uh, and he records this episode of the people crying out for Bar Abbas. Now remember, that's an Aramaic name, Bar being son, Abba, father, son of the father. And, and, and Luke is the one that tells us why Bar Abbas is in prison, of you know, insurrection uh, and murder. And who did the people cry out to be released? Barabbas, son of the father. That's what his name means. So what's fascinating about this and how God arranges things in his infinite wisdom and um, you know, in this divine comedy, and using that word comedy in the, 
in, in the uh, sort of classic sense, this is a, just a wonderful story as opposed to a tragedy. And even though it appears to be a tragedy, it's, it's really a wonderful thing. And here we see in this little episode of Barabbas what's actually happening as Jesus goes to the cross. That we go free. You know, for all, even though we're guilty of murder in our hearts, uh, insurrection against the authority, meaning God, we, we rebel against his authority. Uh, and think about that on a daily basis, how much we rebel against him. And he promises us good things, you know, blessings in, in the good things that he would have. And, and they come from God. They are good things. I'm thinking of the commandments. And, and yet we rebel against that, thinking somehow we know better. And what's amazing about how deep our sin takes us is that we walk in around that is we walk around in a world that is just crumbling with the effects of our decisions particularly now i talked a little bit about this you know last night i talked about this a lot but how can you not observe it you know it's just uh, it's just a wreck uh, and getting worse by the will, will anything surprise us anymore you know we have uh, uh, uh drag queens uh, dressing uh, uh treat uh, reading, doing story hour with kids. We, we have sort of a desensitate, trying to desensitize our kids to anything. Think about the whole trans ideology. Um, and there's some good work done out there about what we do with our bodies and how we let them be mutilated. And the, the culture of death that we're in, we're thinking about, I'm thinking about abortion there. And, and it's just a wreck. You know, and, and somehow we, we, are we blind to these things? We're not, but we just, want to do what we want to do. We justify it saying, we, we, we call these horrible things that we do loving. You know, loving. Uh, to destroy another human life, whether it's by the misuse of their body or by killing them. To destroy our communities or, you know, whatever it is. We, we can talk about, dabble in environmentalism. I'm not a tree hugger, but you think, boy, when we can't check our appetites, how we just destroy everything around us uh, and, and, and bring things to ruin. Uh, we don't look at our neighbor and, and, and uh, see their needs. We, we just look to our own needs and um, think about how we both have the elections coming up, uh, which isn't until November, but you know the, we're in the primary season for those for the general election. Uh, it's not the big, you know, every four years, it's not the, uh, it, it's a big election. I mean, we're going to um, elect uh, uh, new members of Congress or reelect incumbent members. But I think about that, you know, it's like, boy, do we vote just for our own, our own desires, yeah, we frequently do. Our own Wallace. Well, anyway, you get the point. You know, we are the murderers. We are the insurrectionists, and yet we are covered with the blood of Christ. Therefore, we go free. And because Jesus dies, we get to go free. So, in this little episode, you see what's actually being played out on the cross. That we, who are called, because we are covered with the blood of Christ. We are, when God looks at us, this is, remember, salvation is outside of you. It's on you. Yeah, Christ moves into your heart. The Holy Spirit's in your heart. But think of salvation in that way. That's something external to you. And then you won't fall into that trap of, why is my heart so, you know, even though I'm saved? You know, why, why do I keep struggling with sin and keep thinking only of myself and things like that? Um, uh, you, you know, because you are who you are until you die. Um and yeah, God goes to work on us, and he does with time changes. We think about things differently, but we still struggle with sin. And yet, I know I'm saved, even though I know my heart, because I have been washed with the blood of Christ. So when God looks at me, the Father looks at me, he sees the perfect righteousness of his Son, which is covering me. And for that reason, I'm forgiven. And for that reason, I can come into the presence of the Father, because I'm covered, I'm dressed with Christ. It's a theme throughout Scripture that we you know, God's people being dressed uh, like a bridegroom, like a bride, you know, adorned for her, for her groom. And that's us. Remember, that's the collective title for the church. We are the bride. He is the groom. So anyway, in this tiny little episode of just, you know, Jesus standing there, you know, Pilate uh, saying, Come on, which one do you want me to release? I, I find no guilt in this man. I'll punish him and release him. And they're crying out, Barabbas. Barabbas, which means son of the father, and and he goes free. The one who's guilty goes free, just like us, because Jesus is killed in our place.
Yeah, remarkable. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless the church and the pastors that you have called to proclaim the word of Christ. For those who work alongside the pastor, teachers, deacons, deaconesses, and other church workers. For our missionaries throughout the world and all who serve the church. That we, as your people, may make a fruitful and salutary use of the blessed sacrament of Christ's body and blood, that we may be faithful in our calling as we proclaim the gospel, and that we may, through your good, through your good graces and you working through us, bring people to you and the salvation which is freely offered for the sake of Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, be with those who are crying out to you this evening, especially Clinton, who remains gravely ill, for Karen and Andy, for Dave and Sandy, Dawn and Dennis, for Tony, Dale and Nicholas, for Jason, Josiah, Joe, Dee, Dylan and Katie, Marge, Carrie, Jill, Don, Bert, Billy, and again, all who are crying out to you. Place your hand upon them. If it be your will, heal them, keeping them mindful of your victory even over death itself. Be with those who care for them and their families as they remain at their sides. Heavenly Father, bless those who will be traveling uh, this upcoming weekend. Grant them safe travel to their destination. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Bend your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing, I know I just sang it uh, a couple of nights ago, but I'm going to return again to hymn 430, uh, which each stanza has an episode of this passion. So tonight I'm just going to sing stanza 5, which deals with this episode of our Lord's passion that I, I was speaking of this evening. They rise and needs will have My dear Lord made a way a murderer they save, the prince of life they slay. Yet cheerful he to suffering goes, that he his foes from thence might free. That is a, uh, a, a beautiful hymn. I think it's, it's an English hymn. And it's written by Samuel Crosman, who died in 1683. Just think about that stanza for a moment, if you'll permit me. Um, they rise, and needs will have my dear Lord made a way. Uh, he makes a way knowing our need. A murderer, they say, that's Barabbas. 
the prince of life, they say, and yet he goes. He doesn't destroy them. He doesn't call them on it. He goes uh, to suffering. Why? That he, his foes, you and me, while we were enemies, Christ died for the ungodly. That he, his foes from thence, suffering, death, he goes, that he might free us from that same fate. That's remarkable. Um, beautiful hymnody uh, is a real gift to the church. Maybe take some time on it. Uh, kind of a nice thing. We don't do it to, you know, so many things I, I want to teach about, and it's only me. And, you know, you're just kind of in your mind all the time, well, what's important? And uh, so I have a lot of apologetics emphasis in my classes. But studying the hymns, so, so maybe on a Sunday afternoon, uh, look at the hymn of the day and look up the passages down here in the bottom, the tiny little print we see. This whole hymn, Hymn 430, is based on Isaiah 52 through 53, it's a suffering servant, Romans 5, 6, um, uh, and 5, 10, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, that's the great hymn uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 13, Acts 3, 13 to 15, doesn't even mention Luke, uh, uh, Luke is there, uh, uh, certainly with this episode, so there's there's a, an entire list of hymns, and they pick out maybe some of the the uh, major ones, and then you see who wrote it, and uh, if there's a translation, who translated it, uh, but maybe reflect on, on those words, and um, the depth, and what they mean, because one of the nice things about, and this is one of the reasons we pay attention as Lutherans, to our hymnody, and what we sing, as we should, is because they are sung in paraphrases of scripture, and prayers, and they're easy for us to remember. You know, you know this beautiful melody from my song uh, is Love Unknown. You'll, you'll remember that melody all week, and you can recall the words quite easily. It's a great gift God has put into our brains, that music is much easier for us to recall than just spoken word. It, I don't know why, uh, but it's a really cool thing. You can still think of your favorite song when you were in high school. You can still remember it, and you can still sing it, uh, um, or a hymn that you grew up singing. So anyway... Uh, embrace the hymns. Uh, make sure your church is, is, is singing them and not, uh, you know, not every hymn we have is so theologically deep. Some are deeper than others, but uh, they go through quite a process and uh, um, to get into the hymnal to make sure that they're confessing properly and they are constantly teaching us. So I think even the simpler ones uh, are still can be quite deep if you, if you get about it. But, you know, it's it's nice to have these deep, rich hymns and a whole book full of them, and uh, and things that many Christians from all places and all times have sung. You know, this is being sung since uh, well, the words are written sometime you know in the in the seventh the seventeenth century, and the music, uh, uh, the tune, uh, the man who wrote that lived from eighteen John Ireland, eighteen seventy nine to nineteen sixty two. So maybe a, a in the grand scheme of things, a more recent hymn, and just beautiful. Anyway, enough about that. You're tired of listening to me, I'm sure, but uh, anyway, these you know, don't mess with the liturgy. It's a gift. Um, with that, I'll stop, and I'll bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.